the morning market kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida, 8.30 a.m. Monday morning, one hour to go until the opening bell. And we have a negative market in a pretty dramatic fashion to start things off. Right now, you've got Dow futures negative 451 points. You heard it correctly. That's more than 1.5% in the red, trading at 28,482. S&P futures negative by 49 right now. That's 1.5% as well, trading 32.44. NASDAQ futures leading the way down off 162 points. That's about 1.8% in the red, trading at 89.82 to NASDAQ 100. Oil negative a buck 49. The oil slide continues on a growth concerns having to do with the coronavirus in China and that's spreading across the globe. Oil down a buck 49 or 2.7% at 52.70. Bonds trading higher in price, lower in yield. The 10-year, 1.62% as the safe haven of bonds is where investors seem to be flocking to. And we're going to start things off this morning with the volatility index. As you may expect, markets opening up between 1.5 to almost 2% in the red. You have the extension of the fear on Friday. Pretty remarkable that we go from almost, almost a 12 handle on Thursday. We almost hit a 19 handle at about 6 a.m. this morning, 1876. The high on that volatility index, 1845 currently with one hour to go until the opening bell. Let's jump over to the markets. We'll start things off with the Dow. We'll back it up to last night, and you can see the jump. Things began right away. Futures open at about 28,000, 613 in the Dow, and we've extended those losses the slide at about 3.30 in the morning. We go from 28,690. We're currently sitting right near the lows, 28,484. S&P 500, pretty similar action. We open at about 32.53. We're now about 10 points below that level, 32.43. The low overnight, 6 a.m., 32.36. NASDAQ 100, the NASDAQ, the leader in negative territory. We open at about 9,011. We make it all the way down to 89.44, currently trading 89.75. There's your crude oil market, pretty similar action. We closed last week at 54.29. Now, keeping things in context, folks, you back it up, we were almost at $60 to begin last week. This week, 52.69. We actually made it down as low as 52.16, almost got a 51 handle in the price of March crude. Gold catching a bid made it as high as 1585 at 6 a.m. Last night when we opened, we were up at 1587 last night, Sunday, 6 p.m. in the February gold future. And the euro U.S. dollar trading at 11028. All of this having to do with the Wuhan coronavirus. More than 2,860 cases now con confirmed. That death toll rising to 81 people on Monday. Chinese premier visited the epicenter of the outbreak. You now have China extending the lunar holiday. Their market's going to be closed until February 3rd. That is a week from today. You have an, and to get into it, we now have 2,862 cases, eight to, the death toll rising to 81. Pretty remarkable over there. In terms of what else you have happening in the market, this sinking to the 41 uh, excuse me, uh, 410 points. The Dow, 438 points at one point is where it was. China is the biggest driver of global growth, so this couldn't have started at a worse place in terms of just the number of people. The stocks that you look to in terms of biggest action this morning, we'll jump over to the charts in a moment. Airline stocks, American and Delta, both down about 3% pre-market. United, 3.2. Of course, stocks like Las Vegas Sands, and the win relying on Macau, 7.2 and 5.8 respectively. MGM down about 3%. Travel stocks, Expedia, Carnival, Marriott all pull back at least more than 2%. Consumer shares with exposure to China, Apple, Disney, Nike, Estee Lauder dropping 1.9. Caterpillar, a bellwether for global growth, 2.3%. Jumping over to some of those charts as we pull it up, we'll jump to the airline stocks first. United. Looking to open at about 78.85, closed at 
Delta, DAL, looking to open about 5650, closed at 5881. We'll jump over to Apple, closed at 31831, made it as low as 30859, now at about 31175. Boeing, Boeing dealing with their own woes. They had a plane that supposedly went down, I believe it was in. I'm not sure, no, but there was a Boeing that potentially went down. Boeing out with their earnings on Wednesday. They'll have a conference call. They have a lot to answer for outside of the coronavirus in terms of the 737 MAX. They'll be dealing with their own woes. Their earnings on Wednesday are their, under their new CEO. A huge week this week in earnings overall. We get 145 stocks this week alone of the 500 S&P stocks. Some of those stocks, as we pull it up right now, We'll jump over. And here we are. So DR, DR Horton, they're already out with their earnings, I believe. DHI, let's jump to them this morning. And there's the action. You actually had DHI, DR, DH Horton spiking to 6026, pulling back now under the close of 5851 you had on Friday. We also had sprint earnings this morning, delivering some subscriber growth, but looking to be pretty much where we were. In terms of closing at Friday at 483, Sprint right now trading right at 483. The rest of the week, some of the bigger stocks out there. You got tomorrow, 3M, Harley Davidson, Lockheed Martin, Pfizer, United Technologies, AMD, Apple, eBay, Starbucks, Xilinx after the close. Wednesday, Anthem, AT&T, Boeing, as we mentioned, Dow, MasterCard, McDonald's before the open, Facebook, Microsoft. Mondelez, PayPal, Tesla. I mean, it's a huge week in tech and a huge week just overall. You got Apple Tuesday, as we mentioned, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon on Wednesday as well. Uh, excuse me, Amazon on Thursday. Biogen, Coke, Eli Lilly, General Electric, Hershey, UPS, Valero, Verizon before the open on Thursday. Visa. Some of those credit card companies, we'll jump over to those in a moment. They're getting hit hard, especially as well in terms of growth concerns. People not able to spend money as they're just basically curtailing that growth because of the virus. And Friday, Caterpillar, Colgate, Palmolive, Chevron, Exxon before the open. Jumping over to the sum of them, as I mentioned, Visa, as you'd expect, closed at 205, down about 2.5% at 200.60. American Express, with their earnings last week, great earnings Friday morning. But the coronavirus fears curtailing some of that profit as they spiked to 138.13 on Friday. As the market started to pull back on Friday, you saw a lot of those gains paired. And it looks like American Express is going to give back almost all of those gains back to where we closed at Thursday. They came out with their earnings. You see it on the Thinkorswim platform. We're looking to open about 132.04 this morning on American Express. And some of the other bigger stocks out there. Disney this morning closed at 140.08, looking to open 136.36. Nike shares 102.03, looking to open under 100 to 99.49. McDonald's, I mentioned earnings this week, closed at 211.24, looking to open at about 207.50. No matter where you look in this market, folks, with indices down between 1.5 to 2 percent, red across the board, fears gripping the markets. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Checking in on markets right where we started off. Dow off about 450 points. S&P futures negative by 49 right now. NASDAQ futures negative by 162 points. Oil in the negative. We'll jump to that chart. Just hanging out 52.59. You're the gold spike higher to 15.87 overnight. And we're going to jump to yields as Treasury yields falls to the lowest since October as a flight to safety, a flight to the bonds, the note market, have Treasury yields falling to the lowest since October. I heard this morning you have the yield curve flattening to now just 18 ticks between where the two-year and the 10-year getting into it. Here's your two-year, 1.45%. You have the 10-year now. 1.62, that's actually 17 ticks as the curve. You see the flattening, three month, 1.52, the year 1.52. You get a dip in terms of the two year and the five year down to about 1.45, and then you're back up to about 1.62. But that difference between the two year, 1.45, and the 10 year, as you've really seen that 10 year pull back pretty strongly, as there's been just a flight to safety as people pull money out of the markets, flight to safe haven, risk off as they call it in the markets. So the 10-year note, 1.6194. The 30-year bond also lower, 2.076. 10-year treasury yield touched the low of 1.603% this morning. And in terms of other news we have happening this week, so we covered the earnings sector in terms of the economic calendar. New, new home sales coming out this morning. We have Dallas Fed Manufacturing. That's the other thing we haven't touched on. It is Fed Week, folks. Lost in all of this. It'll be interesting to see in terms of what Jerome Powell, uh, a cut not even priced in remotely. But boy, oh boy, if we get a huge acceleration, if we get dramatic growth fears gripping the market, I wonder if that'll play into the Fed meeting coming in the first one in, J in January. That begins tomorrow. An announcement due on Tuesday, and there will be, uh, excuse me, announcement due on Wednesday, and there will be a press conference. Tuesday, durable goods, December, preliminary, 0.9% expected, 2.1 negative being the prior. Durable goods transportation, jumping to Wednesday, MBA mortgage applications, wholesale inventories month to month, pending home sales. Thursday, we get GDP quarter on quarter, fourth quarter, 2.2 expected, 2.1% was the third quarter reading. You get personal consumption, PCI. 
Core PCE quarter on quarter, lots of numbers coming out. Of course, you get continuing claims, jobless claims, initial claims, week ended, and then employer cost index, personal income in December. So lots of numbers coming out this week. And I mentioned it before, and there is the headline that there was Boeing made passenger plane crashing in Afghanistan. It was so that hitting Boeing shares this morning as well. And we got to mention it. Pretty sad story over the weekend. I'm sure you may have heard about it. It's pretty remarkable that you can almost assume everybody has heard about it because the man was such a legend. Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, who is 13, and seven others dying in a helicopter crash in California yesterday. That news reverberating around the globe yesterday. Sad story. Quite, uh, quite an amazing man, legend in the world of basketball, and also remarkable that he was in the news the day before because. LeBron James had just passed him for number three in the all-time scoring. So when people started to see that headline, it was kind of like, is this for real? And sure enough, sadly enough, it was. Life is short, folks. Pretty remarkable, sad. Kobe Bryant dead at the age of 41 as of yesterday. And lots of, lots of sadness and lots of uh, tributes paid to him in the games yesterday. Number 24, a lot of the games going on with the 24 shot clock, second shot clock expiring in remembrance of Kobe Bryant. Back to the markets, J&J. &J. So as we proceed in this coronavirus, Johnson & Johnson, chief scientific officer, said he believes the drug maker can create a vaccine in the coming months. Boy, oh boy, months. I mean, this is where things get dicey. We've seen an escalation now where I believe on Friday when we started things off, we were looking at maybe 400 to 600 confirmed cases. We kick off Monday morning with 2,860 cases. We began Friday morning to put things in context with one confirmed case in the U.S. I believe we start off Monday morning with five confirmed cases now in the U.S. Months. That could get pretty dicey if it takes months, but that's, uh, I imagine, even quick in terms of how a virus vaccine could be created. You have Johnson & Johnson, chief scientific officer. Now, again, he's, of course, going to be touting his own skills. Keep this in context. But they have dozens of scientists working on this, so we're pretty confident we can get something made that will work, stay active for the longer term. We'll see in the next few weeks how this goes. Chinese officials said there are now more than 2,800 cases of the flu-like coronavirus. One of the most one of the scariest things about this virus is that it reportedly has a two-week incubation period. That you could be a carrier for two weeks, not even know it, not show symptoms, and be spreading the virus. That is is pretty scary to say the least. Most countries are also reporting coronavirus cases, cases including the U.S., which on Sunday confirmed the fifth, as I mentioned. The new strain comes from a large family of viruses known as coronavirus. This strain, though, brand new. They are known to call an illness, cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as the outbreak of SARS, which was now about 17 years ago, 2002 to 2003. This gentleman said the pharmaceutical company need, needed to start from scratch on this vaccine, much like how it operated in the Zika outbreak. Though Johnson & Johnson could shave two to three months off of that due to technological advances, we're going to take an approach with at least five different constructs and different partners and collaborations over the world in order to see which part of that virus we can use to make an effective vaccine, and hopefully they have some success. Several companies, including Disney, are suspending operations. You have Disney Shanghai closing. You have McDonald's and Starbucks closing stores across Asia. Also, Temporary ban in wild animals in China as China just really tries to reverberate things to kind of clamp down on that market. Jumping over to some of those stocks in particular, Mickey D's, one, excuse me, 207.41. You see the slide from even Friday, 214. And we mentioned Starbucks, SBUX as well, was up to 94.28 at the beginning of Friday. Looks like we're going to have an 89 handle to start things off this morning on Starbucks. Checking back in on the VIX as things reverberate, 1846. VIX just kind of hanging there right now on that market. And Netflix this morning jumping around. Netflix actually getting an upgrade, still trading lower. But Netflix getting an upgrade on the fact that cord cutting is accelerating. And uh, I would have to agree with that just fundamentally. Myself, I cord cut myself. Now you got Netflix, you got Prime. I might get Disney Plus, the Hulu, the ESPN Plus streaming service. Netflix quite a pop on Thursday and Friday. Traded from 323.30 all the way up to almost 360 at the beginning of Friday. Now back to about 345. And in terms of high flyers, got to check on the biggest high flyer of them all recently. 
Tesla made it up to 594.50 as of Wednesday. Backing off a bit, you now have Tesla this morning looking at about 539.74. But putting Tesla in context, folks, even let's just back it up 20 days. How about that? We we're almost at 400, almost made it up to 600, let alone if you back this up even 180. You were down in, Ju in June at 176. The run really began when we were back in about October 23rd at $252. In the span of a heartbeat, you're above 300. And you haven't even looked back. And then you back it up to about December 5th from 330. You almost doubled the price of the stock of Tesla from $326 when we were out there at about December 5th, now trading 539.50 50 this morning in Tesla. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to wrap up the show. We'll show you what else we have on tap for this week at TFNM. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Markets right where we started off. 1.5% in the red for the S&P. That's 49 points off. Dow futures off 1.54% or 445 points in the red. NASDAQ futures off 1.8% right now, 165 points. NASDAQ 100 futures in the red right now. Jumping around to some of the other stocks, as I mentioned earlier this morning, you had Estee Lauder getting a downgrade this morning on those fears in terms of the coronavirus growth, looking open about 197. I mentioned the casino stocks. There is win, 124.21. 
And we had Las Vegas Sands as well, looking open about 63, closed last week at almost $68. In terms of what else is happening in the market, it's an interesting week for a webinar, folks. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Larry Pezzavento, Wednesday night, two days from right now, he'll be with subscribers to Fibonacci 24-7. And, folks, great day to sign up. Larry put out an awesome report over the weekend, as he normally does. He's got like 20, 30 charts in there, videos, a full in-depth write-up. It's a weekly wrap-up he puts out on Sundays. He's already got a video out this morning and a couple charts, so you gain access to all of that. You gain access to the 90-minute webinar taking place Wednesday night, right after Tom's program, 4 till 5.30. That will be archived if you can't attend live. Right on the front page of TFNN, click on that link. You can see a little bit more about what Larry is going to be talking about. I encourage you to check that out Wednesday evening, 4 p.m., Larry Pezzavento out there. What else? One final check on the markets, folks. We'll jump through the charts as we get ready for this market to begin. There's your Dow 30, just hanging at these levels since we began the program. 28,500 on the dot right now. S&P's 3244 for a little context. S&P's pulling up where we've been. We were just at record highs, folks. 3337 Wednesday morning. We are now at 32.44. We reached 32.35. That's more than 100 S&P points from where we were at Wednesday to where we were as of 6 a.m. this morning as markets escalating to the downside. I appreciate you joining me. Stay tuned. Larry Pezzavento coming up live at 9 o'clock. Don't forget to check out his program, his work, uh, workshop on the front page of TFNN. Thanks, folks. Have a great day. We'll be right back.